All right, I'm bored. You're bored. Let's get this over with. We last left off with also being the crap out of Yami, being the crap out of Magna, and finally being the crap out of Luck, as well as doing some flirting in with Noel and <laughs> Vanessa. I am not going to do any semi scenes. I am not going to do that. They are underage. I know the laws are different in Japan. Maybe maybe they have changed them a little bit, but still, I'm from America. I'm in America. I am not going to do that. No, I am not. They have to be at least 18, which I may do in the time skip later on. You never know. But comment if you want me to to do such scenes when they're of age. Oh god, god. Oh man. I'm, I'm worried about what you want. You guys might comment. Jacob. But you look back to the story. Now we just got back from the hospital and is looking around the hideout only to find Asta doing some sweeping and having his sword at the hip. Yami quickly demands it back and also with a smug look on his face says, fight me and earn it back. Yami knowing he can't be him as he is, but still challenges him anyway. I can't deny this. He gets his ass whooped again. It, it is no contest. Since he doesn't have the sword, he can't redo really his dark slashes in more. That sword is a part of his grimoire now. There's no denying it. But he did at least entertain Asta, so Asta gave him back his sword. Because that's how nice he is. If you're of any use to him. But either way. Let me thank Asta, Magna, and Love Walk by trying not to piss off Asta. And this is where Noel just pops up, wanting to know what that little flirting session was for. Uh, he he just looked at her and gave a slight smirk and says, "Not oh, wherever you want it to be. It." Can, could mean something or it could not. It depends on how you feel. Which just causes her to blush because she is a Sundere, but you you should know how Sundere's are. You should know. Vanessa just walks up from behind him. Hey, you know, give him, give him a slight hug. T telling him that she will not lose to Noel. Noel is a, a little pissed with her sundereness and just plays it off like she doesn't like Asta. Which Vanessa just goes around saying, Oh, good, so I win. But before this could escalate any further, I should just yell out to hold up. And I am not going to be tied down to just one woman. I'm going to be a king. And a king needs at least more than one wife. I'm positive I have the stamina to take on more than one of you. Noel blushes like hell, looking like a tomato, 
But yeah, so she's actually just getting more interested. Right now she's thinking, okay, I just can't wait for you to turn 18. I got a good surprise for you. Oh yeah, I said I wasn't going to do any steamy stuff. I didn't say anything about I wasn't. I didn't say I wasn't going to tease. Either way, just had a little time skip to the point where Magna and Captain Yami decided to go gambling, lose all their money and their clothes, only having their grimoires and their Black Bulls robes. You, you know what's going to happen, yes. Him. <clears throat> so, they get the mission from the chief of Saucy Village just to kill some boars of all. Magnus still has to share his ride with Asta as well as Noel since she can't control her magic and since Asta can't fly on brooms. They get there. Asta quickly gets rid of all of the boars. Seriously, they are no challenge. All he had, all he knows is that he they are having bacon tonight. They make it back to the village when they finally see the fog. Also, not like Venus and even smelling blood decides to cut through it without, with his um anti magic sword without my. Not even having to say anything. They come, they come up to the scene of the chief being struck down by this ice mage, as well as the villagers being herded up and being held at ice shard points or magic point, however you would. Classify that as. Asa gets pissed as well as Magna, and they rush in. Of course, the guy with the pocket watch complains about how they're wasting his time and shoots an ice spike straight at Asa. Asa catches it, surprising everyone, and uses Hamon to melt the ice, further shocking everyone. Heck, even the watch guy is surprised, but he quickly shrugs it off and decides to kill them all as quickly as possible so he can stay on schedule. Just like in canon, since he doesn't have magic, also can go around undetected when thanks to Magnus. Scatter shot clashing with ice, it creates a perfect smoke screen for Asta. And he starts to, to strike down each and every mage without killing them. However, the pocket watch mage does not know that. And since Asa saw him as the obvious leader, he said, uh, might as well be my cheat day. Might I should at least cut down one of you. Ice Major is surprised that this kid is surprisingly okay with murder. Which, who wouldn't? If a, if a kid... <laughs> completely fine with murdering someone that that kid needs help just don't blame video games because that is a stupid argument seriously <clears throat> either way I still bears his sinister villainous like smile he's not a villain he's like he's like an anti-hero okay Okay. And 
<laughs> so he creeps up to the watch Ice Mage. With him starting to really cower in fear of this menacing or that Asa is exerting. And it is terrifying. You would piss yourself if you were around him. Which I guess the Ice Mage would just be pissing ice cubes. Then also appear, disappears from his sight and reappears right behind him. Grab him from behind by his neck and snaps it. The villagers as well as Magna Nut and Ozell are shocked. They barely had to do anything. If anything, no, Noel was nothing, nothing but an extra. At least, at least Magna can create a good smoke screen. And with that, also says to tie up the other mages. This one's dead, so I might as well bury him myself since it was my fault in the past. You know, in that nonchalant attitude, like, well, says I, I kill them. I might as well do it. Like, like you have to do a ch chores when it's your turn. Like it's no big deal, but you wish you didn't have to. I was surprised. I said, "Wait, why? Why bother tying up the other mages?" Then you, like, also says, "No." Nope. I may look like they were dead, but really I just knocked them out. A well placed slash and a good neck chop is all you really need to make people think you're dead. Especially if you have someone who's as precise as me. I made sure to, to miss the vitals. It still hurts like hell, but yeah, they'll live. So the tail of the mages and decided to think, all right, what should we do with you? We take the leaders dead. Thanks to our muscle head over here. So just so happens to be a good tactician since he lets you live. And you kind of pissed me off when you killed the chief of my village. Huh. Also, looking at Magnus, I just thinking, okay, this, this guy could be fun. I'm, I might want to keep this guy around me. He, he has something I like. So, yeah, with their boss dead, not being able to them to you know do the suicide pack thing they're stuck there completely at their mercy this is when Nero shows up and starts pecking also in the head with that dang magic stone also getting pissed threatens Nero saying that he's gonna cook her if she doesn't back off which, Nero knows he is not bluffing. They bury the chief and get the magic stone as their reward since, yeah, the, they did do the, the job they were sent there to do in the first place, which is kill all those boars. And that magic stone did we have a real use to them so heck yeah y'all can just take it it doesn't harm us no, no way at all so not only did they get the magic stone kill all the boars save the village the chief still dies sadly too bad because I really liked him huh.
Well, either way. And they actually get some host hostages. Host hostages? Hostages. There, there's the word. Yeah, there it is. And take him back to the Clover Kingdom to be interrogated. And Asta offered his services for the interrog interrogation. Would you like to hear some details on that? Of course you would. You, <laughs> you're screwed up in the head just like I am, aren't you? Good. <clears throat> so they had head back and get ready for the interrogation. Also, just says give him ten minutes alone with him, and don't mind the screams. Now. A rational and level-headed person would just do a 10 minute time skip, but me, no. Alright, here we go. Here. We got out also in the interrogation room where he brings out this tray full of tools. These trays full of scalpels, pliers, and syringe. You know, just normal little things you would need. Yeah, and picks up these special new nose pliers and start taking off their toenails and fingernails one by one. Each time they don't answer him or give him an answer he does not like. They insisted on not answering, so they end up with no finger or toenails whatsoever. The Wizard King getting terrified of this one kid from all the screams he's dishing out all those screams that are due to his special kind of torture but, but we're done with the toenails and fingernails let's get to the teeth and I also just said since you don't feel like talking you don't really need those choppers, are you? All the mates just started looking, looking, looking at each other. So he started from the oldest and got until he got to the youngest. Oh, they screamed, filled the halls. We were wondering what kind of monster did they let into the magic nights. This kid was ruthless. He, he must have been a torturer in his past life. Like this boy is sadistic. I, they, they're begging for their lives. They just, they're begging for their lives. Just wanting the pain to stop. And also it's just laughing. As they cry and scream. Uh, until he stops laughing and gets serious. Since they don't want to talk after everything he's done so far, he might as well get the scalpel and see if they are doing all right. Let's see, check on their health. Time to play doctor. He's... He's done playing with their nails and their teeth. He's, he decided to play full on doctor. Start with the oldest. And started to skin him alive while the others watched in horror. And just in case, he he gagged them just in just the right way so they won't choke on their own tongues or let out too many screams uh, heck it wasn't even just for torture anymore for, or an interrogation it was just for fun for us and now heck so, so much so he said oh, screw it, since you're the strongest and I guess you're not going to talk in the first place I might as well Get rid of that tongue of yours first. 
you know, can you hear our muffled screams and cries of a middle aged man be begging for his life, begging for death, a quick death? Not this. The Witcher King had enough and said, fuck, fuck this, I, I'd rather do something else. I'd, I'd rather that them die by old age or my hands. This isn't... He opens the door to see the middle-aged man's flayed corpse hanging from the ceiling upside down. He was horrified. Then he saw the others gagged and crying. Started to say, we'll tell you everything through the gags. And that is how they learn about the Eye of the Midnight Sun ahead of time. And that is how I will end this part. I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed the torture part, I can make more. Hey, don't don't look at me like that. I, I'm I'm not that demented. Anyway, goodbye.